Well, good morning again. Uh, today we're on to Hanukkah, sometimes known as the Feast of Dedication or the Festival of Lights. And while Purim, which we discussed yesterday, is directly mentioned in the Book of Esther, Hanukkah actually only gets a passing nod. Interestingly, it's in chapter 10 of God, John's Gospel, uh, which reads, Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. Why was he there? Well, probably just teaching. But what do we find? Where do we find info on Hanukkah? Well, the answer is in the four books of the Maccabees. If you've not heard of these books, they're found in the ragbag collection of non-standard literature called the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is accepted as scripture by Roman Catholics and routinely read in Roman Catholic churches, but it's omitted from the generally accepted Protestant Bible. And interestingly, despite their very Jewish nature, Jewish authorities don't call them accord them the status of scripture either. Well, I'm firmly in the camp that doesn't regard these books as God breathed, but that's different from saying that they can't be a useful historical source, which I feel applies to the four books of Maccabees. Now, I'm slightly stuck here because I can't tell you to go away and read them and they're way too long to actually tell the full story. So I'm stuck with offering you a potted version. So my apologies for that. A little bit of background first though. So following Cyrus's famous decree, around 50,000 Jewish exiles returned from Persia to their homeland followed by other waves a century later under Ezra and Nehemiah. And upon their return, they enjoyed self-rule in fits and starts and to varying degrees. But by and large, Israel, renamed Judea, was a quasi-vassal state. 30 to 40 years prior to Jesus' birth, the Romans installed Herod as a puppet king. And by Jesus' adult years, Herod was gone and Roman rule was overt. But that leaves out a large block of time in between. Now, when Alexander the Great rampaged around the world in the 300s BC, Israel was a Greek protectorate. Um, but after he died, his vast extensive empire was divided between his four generals. Israel first fell under the rulership of Ptolemy and then later the family of Seleucus whose very successful dynasty lasted 260 years. At first Jews could worship freely at their new rough and ready temple uh, but in 164 BC one of his descendants, a man named Antiochus, decided that he wanted to be God. He stopped the temple sacrifices, sacrificed pigs on the altar and set up his own image there. He wanted to be called Antiochus Epiphanes, Epiphanes meaning God manifest, although the locals nicknamed him Antiochus Epimenes, which means the madman. Opposition didn't stop there. A group of Jews, one family in particular, led a revolt and won a truly amazing military victory. And the main man was called Judo's nickname, the Hammer, which is what Maccabee means. And the nickname stuck to him and his four brothers. So the books of Maccabees tell the story of that in later years. So they were undoubtedly zealots, which meant that they eliminated every vestige of Greek culture they could find. They murdered many of their own people who had adopted Greek culture and compromised themselves. They were not sweet and lovable people, but they got one thing right. They cleansed the temple, which gave rise to a story. 
it wasn't recorded for a long time afterwards and we don't really know if it's definitely true but upon reclaiming the temple there was only one jar of oil one cruise of oil to light the menorah that's the huge candelabra uh, which is part of the temple fixtures and fittings um, that couldn't have lasted more than a day or so um, but in, it took time to prepare a new dedicated unadulterated batch actually eight days and miraculously this single jar lasted that entire time and Hanukkah was established to commemorate the miracle and the military victory which brought them from well brought them several years of self-rule about a generation in fact and it's observed on the 25th day of the ninth month Kislev which usually falls in December this year it's quite early December and we'll revisit this story later in Luke but for there's more again to to relate but for now here's something to think about our society frowns on passion in matters of faith it regards it as dangerous does God agree how passionate are you and how does that show in your life grace and peace to you and we'll be back to luke tomorrow <laughs>